So what do you do after you're named the best major junior player in Canada? Well, there's only one road, and that's going to take you to the big leagues. Ed Staniowski, who played in the NHL for a number of seasons, got that distinction at the end of the 75 seasons. Now, uh, Edward wasn't the biggest drink of water, 5'9", 170, but was a tremendous goalie on both sides of the, the ledger. A good uh, goalie in all his angles and a good uh, goalie to allow the play to transpire. He played with the Blues, who drafted him the Jets and Hartford Whalers of the NHL. He played in 219 NHL games between 75 and 85, with a uh, confusing record of 67, 104, and 21. He was much better than his record indicated. He was, again, a Western Canada Hockey League First Team All-Star in 75, while playing with the Regina Pats, and was named the inaugural recipient of the CHL Play of the Year Award. Now, the pride of Moose Jaw, uh, caught left and was drafted 27 overall, dropped a little bit, bit in the draft in 75, but it was taken 35th overall by the Crusaders <coughs> in the WHA draft <coughs> that year. Now, he first uh, came to major prominence of at all uh, at all places, uh, Moostra, what a surprise, of the SJHL. Now, he eventually found his way to the Pats for a number of seasons, and was their Memorial Cup uh, winner in 74. That year he went 29-12-9 in the regular season. Now, he won a silver for Team Canada at the inaugural World Junior Title event, which of course was an unofficial tournament. He was also the CCM WCHL Player of the Year in 75 with the Pats, All-Star for the first team, and overall uh, win record leader in 74 also with the Pats. It was the Memorial Cup goals against leader in 74 with with 3.0 goals against. The shutouts leader with one and the Memorial Cup wins leader with two. Now, again, he played in the second World Junior Championships in Winnipeg and Brandon in an unofficial tournament that helped set the stage for the first official Worlds in 77. He was eventually loaned by Regina to Westminster as a spare goalie for the 75 Memorial Cup, but did not play in any games. He set... WCHL, WHL career records since broken for games played by a goaltender, 206 minutes played by a goaltender in 2052. Of course, had his big debut on what I call Christmas, uh, pre Christmas week, December 1775 at Toronto. Now he wore his famous uh, 31 for St. Louis and Winnipeg, of course, the famous uh, double blue uh, helmet. Uh, with St. Louis that was one of the favorites of the kids growing up. Not a not an ugly man to look at. My mother called him one of the most handsome players that she ever saw on the ice. Now, uh, NHL uh, playoff stats are very deceptive. He got into the playoffs with St. Louis and helped Winnipeg get to their first uh, 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 set of NHL recognition in uh, the 82 campaign with two playoff goals. Now, he holds the Winnipeg record for most assists by goalie in one season with five, which he shares, set in 82. He set Winnipeg Phoenix record since broken for consecutive wing wins and longest unbeating streak in 81-82, six and eight respectively. He had the longest consecutive shutout sequence at 139 uh, minutes and 51 seconds in 82. He was named the a NHL Player of the Week in late uh, March 1982. And he also recorded Hartford, Carolina's uh, first victory, victory in Philadelphia on December 4th, 1983. Now, he played with numerous minor league teams, uh, with Province of the AHL, Kansas City of the CHL, Salt Lake of the CHL, Sherbrooke of the AHL, and Bimington of the AHL, and as well uh, Salt Lake when it was in the IHL. Now, at the Worlds, he uh, helped Team Canada to a fourth-place finish in 79. Now, he was named the CHL Sawchuck Trophy winner, uh, lowest team goals against average in 78 with Salt Lake. Again, the fifth round, uh, the third round pick of Cleveland in 1975, 35th overall. Now, he played 17 games for Kansas City squad that won the CHL regular season and playoff titles in 77, but was not with the team in the postseason. He played on the CHL regular season champion in Salt Lake in 79, and also played two games for the Salt Lake squad that won the CHL regular season playoff titles, but was not with the squad during the postseason. He also played on the AHL 
regular season champion in Bemington in 85. Now, in 1979, he earned a Charlie Conacher Award for his charity work and dedication to humanities. He worked as a farmer and raised quarter horses in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan during the off-seasons of his playing days. Now, he returned to Regina uh, after his retirement and joined the Canadian Army, and he gained a respected rank of Lieutenant Colonel Commanding Officer in the Royal Regina Rifles and went overseas for several tours of duty. He also worked in the Saskatchewan Provincial Government as a Special Projects Manager. He also served as Vice President and Alumni Liaison for the 2001 Memorial Cup Organizational Committee. Now, he was named a goalie on the all-time Regina squad by, the Canadian, Hockey, by a Canadian Hockey League panel in 1999. Now, uh, no mostly as Eddie in his playing days, St. Louis made the big jump after several years of trying to get, make him a number one or even an under two, Sanawaski was traded with Brian Maxwell and Bob McLean to Winnipeg in exchange for Scott Campbell and John Markell. A very one-sided trade. Winnipeg got the best of that. And I remember his time with Winnipeg, ladies and gentlemen. Winnipeg was a much better team with uh, him and Nett. They had tried uh, different, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, post-WHA uh, NHL franchises. I mean, the players uh, didn't work for the franchise. But to get Winnipeg uh, back into the playoffs after a rough start to their NHL existence, he had a big uh, part of it. So uh, Stadowski, although he didn't reach the heights a lot of people hoped for him, he still was a pretty good goalie. But you're playing in St. Louis and Hartford and Winnipeg. These are not the St. Louis, Hartford, and Winnipeg teams of the mid-1980s. These are still developing, although he played with Gary Unger and Federico in St. Louis. They weren't doing much in the, in the postseason or even the regular season, and he was kind of mired in Winnipeg and mired in Hartford because Hartford, you know, it was uh, there was no way he was going to be number one with uh, Mike Lewitt there. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, the requests are always appreciated and always highly considered. Thanks for listening. Bye.